the horror of the nightclub. I worked at one called Quaffers. A nightmare of a gig. I was greeted by the DJ at the door. He said, come this way, Mr. Cruel. Come on, I'll show you your dressing room before the punters arrive. And I'm walking through this dimly lit club. And I look round. It's a huge 2,000-seater. Anyway, this guy disappears through this mirror door and starts going down this spiral staircase, so I follow him. Down, down, deeper and down, 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 deeper and down, 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 down. Here's a popping guest to the bottom. Over here, Mr. Cool. That door over there, that's your dressing room. But the main thing that you've got to remember is this big wooden area here. This is your rising stage. Now you'll know when you're on, because it'll start coming up. <laughs> so at 11 o'clock, be ready and waiting on it. 20 seconds to 11. I'm stood there, guitar around my neck, knees knocking, trying to look cool. <laughs> and I found out later what actually happens. The DJ presses a button from behind his pulpit. And you can hear these motors start up. <laughs> And you can feel the vibration through your legs. And you start coming up slowly. And the dance floor above starts opening up. And a hundred thousand pounds worth of disco lighting starts flashing on and off. And, and get this, this is the best bit, right? The Thunderbird theme tune starts playing. <laughs> Two hundred decibels, really dramatic. <laughs> you are familiar with Thunderbirds, aren't you? I always thought it was a great series. Acting was a bit wooden, perhaps. <laughs> Lady Penelope and Parker. Get the rules out, Parker. <laughs> right, me lady. <laughs> Would you like go to Virginia? Or Old Hobart, me lady? <laughs> anyway, that's beside the point. Now. I'm coming up. And the head starts appearing above the floor. And the drive belts must have been knackered because it was going. I thought it's going to be quarter an hour before they get to my knees. You know? <laughs> and it finally took hold again. <laughs> Building up to a crescendo right? DJ comes on. Ladies and gentlemen, the man you've all been waiting for. The fabulous Phil Cool. I looked around this twelve in. Thirteen if you counted the coach driver. <laughs> All on a mystery tour from a hospice. <laughs> and of course there was the odd couple. 
dotted about the place. And they're into chicken in the basket. They finished the chicken. They were just starting on the basket. <laughs> How the hell is somebody supposed to laugh with a gob full of raffia? I'll never know. Well, I couldn't do my normal routine. And that night I'd seen a slick American comic on telly. I thought I'd be like him and deliver a stunning one-liner. Right. Hey. Flatulence will get you nowhere. Unless you're using it for fuel, that is. <laughs> Come on out from underneath that mushroom. Because tonight, Ronnie Corbett, the Sinclair. <laughs> Not a titter. I thought, oh, what the hell am I going to do? I know. I'll hit him with something visual. I'll do me aquafibian. <laughs> you know, from Stingray. Surely you remember Stingray. Come on. The theme tune, at least. Maria, aqua Maria. What is that strange enchanting smell of fish whenever you're near? <laughs> well, the aquafibians lived at the bottom of the sea. Right scale a little bug as they were. So I thought, I'll slip into one quick. <laughs> and I've got bad circulation, you know. And sometimes, Sometimes I get this facial cramp, honestly. And this turned out to be sometimes. Yeah, you guessed it, the bastard stuck. I can see the bar staff. Standing at the back of the room, at the back of the bar there. Is it going? <laughs> and the manager's going. the manager signals the DJ. <laughs> and 
Are you into heavy metal? You might be without even knowing it. Mercury traces are being detected in our wildlife. Where's it all going to end? So give a, a warm, sunny welcome to Ian McCaskill. Ian Relax, make yourself comfy. <laughs> yeah. Let me let me first say thanks for breezing in on us. <laughs> like a refreshing little raindrop. I said he was cuddly, didn't I? <laughs> Ian, tell us. Since since you've become a household uh, Someone who's on TV a lot. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you must get recognised when you're out and about. I do get recognised, Terry, almost every day. <laughs> so do I. So do I. Only yesterday. <laughs> Outside Harrods. Outside Harrods, signing autographs, for four and a half hours I was. I just couldn't get away. <laughs> but Ian, listen, just relax, relax. Listen, it takes a lot of people, and it takes a lot of teamwork to predict, to predict the weather. But do you think that you've been chosen to deliver that prediction? Because if it's wrong, nobody could get angry at such a cuddly character. <laughs> There's nothing like that, Jerry. I got the job by plain hard work. Nothing wrong. <laughs> I know what you mean. I'm a bit of a grafter myself. But for all hours I am, and for what? A measly few hundred grand a year. I don't know why the hell I do it. It must be love. <laughs> Ian, listen. Terry, just get, get a few ones in. <laughs> yeah, let me just say, it's been a pleasure listening to you. <laughs> In the castle, in the castle, in the castle, 
just with life. You see, life and I have a relationship. I love life and life loves me. <laughs> but listen, everyone, um, so, brace yourselves. I I I'm going to swear. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> well, of course, you sussed it. I'm not really Cliff. Then who am I? Well, you've probably seen me on Saturday Superstore, Top of the Pops. Uh, answers on a postcard, please, to the Mike Reed Identity Crisis, BBC TV. <laughs> Oh, it's nice to have a couple of wimps on the show, don't you think so, ladies and gentlemen? Nice to have a couple of wimps on the show, ladies and gentlemen. Well, you've got to have your say, ladies and gentlemen. As you can see, as you can see, yours truly, little Benji has gone back to his... <laughs> little Benji has gone back to his original student, Luke. Well, you've got to keep moving on. Got to keep changing the old appearance, ladies and gentlemen. Even if it's only to keep one step out of those bastard impressionists. Well, ladies and gentlemen, have you ever wondered why we comedians never stop for a rest? No commas, no full stops, no abbreviations. That's because we are frightened. We are frightened of silence, ladies and gentlemen. We are frightened of you. We will not laugh at what we say, and that's why we keep going like bleeding and jinsky, ladies and gentlemen. There was a time when I thought I was going to explode, ladies and gentlemen. But gradually, gradually over the years, you learn to slow down and you learn to put the spaces in the right places. And gradually, gradually, that little seed of confidence, that little, tiny little seed of confidence starts to bloom. It starts to blossom, ladies and gentlemen. And before you know it, you have all those millions and millions of little farties eating out of your hand. <laughs> I once saw a documentary about Richard Burton. Now he could drink. Could he shift some stuff? Oh, eh? it, it was 50 years before he had his first hangover. <laughs> well, I knew it was a bloody good one when it came. <laughs> yeah. And he said he, he said he hated theatre audiences. Perhaps this is why he drank so much, I don't know. But if he thought theatre crowds were bad, he would have had a hell of a job coping with all the abuse that you get thrown at in some of these bingo worshipping working men's clubs. Right? Get off your pillock! <laughs> You're going down like Bobby Crush on an oil rig. <laughs> hey Frank, what's his name? What? Richard what? Richard Burton, that's a name to remember. Well remember not to book him again. <laughs> We don't know what the hell you're yakking on about, pal! Get off! <coughs> I... am feeding caviar... to pigs. <laughs> this vintage wine that should be savoured. Going down in swigs. For this is yet another of those nauseating gigs where I am feeding caviar to pigs. My first joke, not a titter, not the flicker of a smile. My next line, so inventive, you missed it by a mile. I'm feeding caviar to pigs. It's stifling my style. But never mind, you all can play your Bingo in a while. I am feeding caviar to pigs. A Rembrandt in a junk shop, unrecognized by every Tom, Dick, and Harry, breathing in the smoke from all the six. Here, feeding caviar to pigs. Granted, there were times when I would pander to the demands of light relief. But Shakespeare wrote for king and peasant, vagabond and thief, a horse, a horse. My king did for us, Mr. Grimsdale. <laughs> 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 you should see your faces. <laughs> Shame. Shame on me. And shame on you. To laugh at such blasphemy of immortal words and wine that echo through the auditoriums of time. You drained the lifeblood from me and left a whiter shade of steel 
<laughs> I suppose next you'll expect me to impersonate Rick Mail. Get a ball with no Shakespeare and fart a chance. <laughs> Is that not such a good act to do, Lush? <laughs> Is it the only one day? To me? Or not to me? Russian. <laughs> Whether it is never in the mind <laughs> to suffer the slings and others of outrageous fortune. <laughs> on Neil's lentil and chickpea stew. <laughs> hey, come on, it's not that bad, Rick. Really. Hey, <laughs> hey. Ah! Oh, stop. <sighs> These wretched. TV images, like Banquo's ghost appear, to haunt my each and every word, and action held. So dear, so dear, 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 dear. <laughs> and what the BBC giving us? Have they given us Shakespeare? Oh, well, all right, then they're giving us Shakespeare. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Come here. Come here. <laughs> well, go back. Come here. God! What am I doing? You bloody stupid people. <laughs> Stools you are! <laughs> Go up, such stool, you have a sword! Shut up! <laughs> Festering in the bowels of incompetence. How Macbeth was right. Out, out, brave candle. Life is but a walking shadow. A poor player who struts and frets his hour upon the stage. And then is heard. No more. A lot of sci-fi and stuff, and uh, late on TV, you know. Uh, it's all like 50s black and white stuff, mostly. It's okay, but there's only one problem with 50s black and white sci-fi. They only have one sound effect for every film, and you recognise it. <laughs> you recognise it as soon as you hear it. It went... There's a man coming out of the forest, Grandfather. Bring my shotgun, Martha. Dung rascal's got funny eyes. <laughs> Anybody here tonight believe in the existence of extraterrestrials living among us, masquerading as humans. <laughs> I asked one audience that and some joker went... Bruh, 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 bruh. <laughs> it's a serious question. Anybody? Here? Believe Would you land here? <laughs> I mean, for instance, just, just imagine hovering over South Africa. What kind of a reception would you get? Come on! Don't be frightened. <laughs> We're not going to treat you any different just because you're green. <laughs> and all they'll, they'll land in England. 
but uh, they, they, they could communicate by jamming the airwaves, what do you think, eh? And appearing on our television screens, right in the middle of News at Ten, with Alistair Burnett. <laughs> the rail strike is now official. <laughs> Today, top world scientists agree that the Earth's magnetic force is being distorted by some strange, unexplained force. And all over the globe, electrical equipment and appliances are going on the blink. And it has been... Off the alley all I'm staring at them. <laughs> all to use my native tongue. <laughs> <laughs> you humans cannot comprehend my immensity. My head alone is the size of the star you call. The sun. <laughs> yeah, the sun. <laughs> and my single testicle <laughs> is the size of planet Saturn. <laughs> Although it hasn't got any rings around it. <laughs> and my extra testicle <laughs> is more like Mars. Red and crinkly. <laughs> little craters. <laughs> I was traveling in deep space when I received your faint distress signal. Neighbor, <laughs> everybody needs to know. <laughs> There is no cause for alarm. Well, that's it. Good night. Only recently I've just survived the most horrendous assault course ever created by man. No, not the Crapton Factory. <laughs> Something far more deadly. The M25 motorway. <laughs> Oh, the country's most expensive practical joke. I mean, you know yourselves, you're driving along. No rush. Ninety. <laughs> when suddenly all the brake lights slam on in front of you, all the hazard lights come on, people are dirting from lane to lane, people are slowing up to a snail's pace, people are stretching their necks to see what hell's causing it. What the hell's going on? What the hell's going on? And then you see it. Not the blockage, but a sign telling you which lane is closed. <laughs> in the distance. So, more often than not, it's the fast overtaking lane. Right? The third lane. So you know it's blocked, so you get out of it quick. Get in the middle lane and queue up. Like a good citizen should. <laughs> you only go slow in this lane. Gets a bit boring, so you wind your window down. <laughs> and you end up with a Grace Jones you never ordered. <laughs> As Mr. Mean goes flying down the outside. And isn't it always a Ford Sierra? <laughs> Driven by an XR four-eyed rep. Straight 
going the extreme right. Pratt and Machine in perfect harmony. <laughs> and as he starts getting near the corns, he realises that he's running out of room. So he starts sneaking over. Puts his left indicator on, creeping in after everybody else has queued up. <laughs> And all the moderate middle of the road people who sat there in the centre lane in the Morris Minor Travellers. <laughs> and you can barely get a razor blade between the bumpers. Because everybody's driving tight formation. But they can still see Mr. Mean in the corner of their eye, frantically winking to get back in. And it's a nice feeling. <laughs> You're not getting in now, pal. <laughs> no way are you getting in. <laughs> Stay there and rot. <laughs> anyway, I can't let you in because I've not seen you. <laughs> and with nine inches to spur, Mr. Mean's getting really desperate, so he gets his left wing right over to your right wing. It's just going to be a paint job when he goes... <clears throat> May I? Squeeze a little one in, can we? <laughs> now, I told you earlier that I never wanted to be an impressionist, but here's where it comes in handy. Because you can wind your window down and go... Forgive me for saying so. <laughs> Mr. Travelling Salesperson. <laughs> But why don't you do everybody a favour and have a nice head-on collision with a motorway bridge, you bastard? <laughs> Give me the advice. Thought you best smarty about the met. <laughs> Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs>